morning, my name is Reverend Julie Sterling and welcome to Suffolk Presbyterian Church. We are so happy to have you with us as we celebrate Pentecost. Friends, let us join in our call to worship. Come to Jesus, you who are thirsty. Hallelujah. Drink deeply the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Let your hearts overflow with the living water that renews the face of the earth. Hallelujah. Brothers and sisters, thanks be to God. We got spirit. Yes, we do. We got spirit. How about you? Spirit. Yes, we do. We got the spirit. How about you? Go! We got the spirit. Yes, we do. We got the spirit. How about you? I got the spirit. How do you do? I I've got the spirit. How about you? I love you, Grandma. I love you, Grandma. We have the spirit. The spirit. How about you? We have spirit. Yes, we do. Yes, spirit. How about you? Yes, we do. We got the spirit. How about you? We got the spirit. Yes, we do. We got the spirit. How about you?
God has promised that everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Therefore, let us call upon the Lord, confessing our sins. God of new creation, we confess that we have failed to trust your bountiful goodness. By the power of the Holy Spirit, you brought forth the earth and its creatures in abundance. Yet we hoard earth's resources and refuse to share your gifts. We dishonor your generosity by withholding our charity to those in need. We betray your kindness by dealing harshly with our enemies. We disregard your compassion by severely judging the sins of others. Forgive us. By the power of your spirit, renew our hearts and free us from sins that we may enjoy the fullness of your blessing upon all creation. Amen. Sisters and brothers, God offers forgiveness of our sins and the grace of repentance. Accept God's grace, repent your sin, and be restored to abundant life. The peace of Christ be with you. How y'all doing? Good to see you. I'm sitting here at home, all alone, and watching television, going out and getting groceries, and that's about it. I haven't done anything else except clean the house and, and get a lot of bags of clothes and stuff to give away. And I'm managing. Miss you all, of course. Looking forward to seeing you again. Peace be with you, Suffolk Presbyterian Church. I bring you greetings on this Pentecost Sunday from your sisters and brothers all across the Presbytery of Eastern Virginia. Have a great day celebrating the birthday of the church. I invite you now to join with me in a prayer of illumination. Let us pray. Almighty God, by the power of your Holy Spirit, speak to us in the language of our hearts that we may hear your word with understanding and answer your call with confidence. Amen. Our scripture reading today comes from the book of Acts, chapter 2, verses 1 through 21. It is the story of Pentecost. Hear the word of the Lord. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like a rush of violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as on fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them the ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem, and at this sound the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one heard them speaking in their, the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not these who live who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, in our own language we hear them speaking about God deeds and power but they all were amazed and perplexed saying to one another what does this mean but others sneered and said they are filled with new wine but Peter standing with the eleven raised his voice and addressed them men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem let this be known to you and listen to what I say Indeed, these are not, they are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be that God declares that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portions in the heaven above, and signs on the earth below. Blood and fire and smoky mist, the sun shall be turned to darkness, and the moon to blood, before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. 
Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Brothers and sisters, may the Spirit of God be with you today. Happy Pentecost Sunday. I am so sorry that we cannot be together today for worship. It is one of my, my favorite Sundays in the life of the church. It's a celebration of God's gift of the Holy Spirit. These past few months have been a lesson in patience. For instance, a few weeks ago, I noticed the Easter lilies that I planted in my yard from last year's service were beginning to make their blooms and I was so excited. Wouldn't it be great if those lilies would bloom for Easter Sunday? Oh, what a sign that would show for the church. We are alive and well and miracles happen. Unfortunately, they did not bloom, at least not then. Friends, one thing I have been reminded by God time and time again lately is that we are not in control. Everything happens in God's time. Even though we are unable to worship together today, the Spirit of the Lord is with us and brings us together in a unique way. And we are truly the church today as much as we were a few months ago. And amazingly, the spirit that we have together is even stronger. Now later this Sunday afternoon, we will meet at the church for a Pentecost parade. We will drive around the neighborhoods and be together in a way that is safe to share the love of the Spirit with our neighbors and with our community. And oh, what a wonderful way it will be to bring together the much needed joy that, you know, Suffolk needs during difficult times. For we have the Spirit, the Spirit of God. And the gift of the Holy Spirit is an amazing part of the fullness of God's plan for us. For on the day of Pentecost, the disciples gathered in Jerusalem during the Jewish Pentecost festival and in Acts 2 1 through 42 it it, it 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 talks about but on the day of Pentecost had come they were all together in one place and suddenly from heaven there came a sound like a rush of violent wind and filled the entire house where they were sitting divided tongues as on fire appeared among them and a tongue rested on each of them all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak the language as the Spirit gave them the ability in the first two verses of Acts 2, we hear that God has not forgotten us. And he does something amazing. For the faithful people living in Jerusalem from all over the world came and they heard. They heard the word of God spoken by people. And they not only understood God's word, but he, they understood one another. And they were confused and perplexed. But Peter declared to them, using the scripture from Joel, to assure them that this is God. For it says in the last days it will be, God declares that I will pour my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy and your young men shall see visions and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women in those days, I will pour out my spirit and they shall prophesy. And I will show portions in heaven above and signs on earth below blood and fire, smoke and mist. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Friends, the gift of the Spirit is an invitation for early believers and for us today to be active roles in God's ministry, in God's church. The spirit that comforts and heals and gives us strength to endure also opens our hearts and minds to God's message and calls us to be the church. The good news of Pentecost is a much important message for our friends and neighbors today, for we are not alone. We may feel isolated from one another, but God's power is connecting us in amazing ways and bringing us together as one church. With so much division and frustration and hurt around us right now, there is the blessing of the Spirit that unites. 
For we are all God's children, no matter our background, our color, our sexual orientation, our age. We are unique and God celebrates our uniqueness. We are cherished, each one of us, by our Father and the Spirit is here to prove that. We are the ones who define our differences. We are the ones that separate ourselves. And God, in his wisdom, gives us the spirit to pull us together every time we try to break apart. God gives us the gift of his love so that we know what it means to be whole. For no matter what we do to each other, God is there with his spirit time and time again to mend our hearts and mend this broken world. Friends, while we are waiting for the end of this new normal, as we pray for scientists and doctors to make a, a vaccine for COVID-19, as we struggle with racial violence and divisions in our community that keep us from being church of God's vision, we still know that God is working. God is making miracles every day. And it's his wisdom that allows us to smile and allows us to find hope. It is his wisdom that gives our leaders the ability to help us through. With this help of the Spirit, we We'll get through tomorrow and we will be stronger for it. Now, I know that this is a difficult time and I wish God could make all of this go away. I wish I could wake up tomorrow and things would go back to normal. But I keep reminding myself that God has got this, but God has got this in his own time. And he's given us the spirit to help us understand. We were reminded in last week's gospel reading from Luke 24, 44 through 53, that God sometimes calls us to wait, to listen, to look and see God working. I'd like to mention also that um, my Easter lilies that I was hoping would bloom on Easter Sunday did finally bloom. As you can see, they're here. But God waited to let them bloom last week, right before Ascension of the Lord's Sunday. Yes, God had a special message for me, a message of hope. Not in my time, but His. Friends, I hope you have a blessed Pentecost Sunday, for the Spirit is touching our lives every day. Do not be afraid to listen and learn, and at times wait. The comfort of the Spirit provides us the strength to do good things in God's name, in His time. I look forward to what God has in store for us in the coming weeks and months and heads. For God is amazing, and God does amazing things to the Spirit every day. Friends, hearing these words, I ask you to join with me in saying, Amen. Let us join in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the Maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
Let us now join in our morning prayer. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we lift up prayers today for our doctors, our nurses, our caregivers and scientists. We lift up prayers for our leaders and those struggling due to the coronavirus. We lift up prayers today for our nation as we deal with great divides, especially those reflected by the death of George Floyd in Minneapolis that full truth to the racial injustice that people face every day. Hear our prayer. Let us be led by the Spirit to lift up our joys, concerns, and thanksgiving to God on this day. For the church and through the world, Almighty God, hear our prayer. Inspire sons and daughters of your church to be the prophetic witness of your truth upon young and old and give clarity of vision to the knowledge of your saving power in the world. For nations and the world and its leaders, mighty God, hear our prayer. Overcome the babble and misunderstanding among nations and all people. Let your people hear their own language and recognize their own culture by a unifying message of love. For our planet Earth and our home, almighty God, hear our prayer. By your spirit, renew the earth. Make us good stewards of its resources and teach us to enjoy the abundance rightly. For those in need and in healing, Almighty God, hear our prayer. Send your healing spirit upon those who are sick in body and mind. Restore them to health and restore them to the joy of salvation. For our neighbors and members of our civic community, Almighty God, hear our prayer. Teach us to be good neighbors, to live in peace with one another, and in friendship share the joy and burdens of daily life. For children, Almighty God, hear our prayer. Bless our children, protect them from danger, and help parents and caregivers nurture them so that they may mature in wisdom and grow in peace. For our enemies, Almighty God, hear our prayer. Bless our enemies and show us how to do good to them in the sake of Jesus Christ. In your mercy, Almighty God, receive our prayers and according to your wisdom, provide all that we need through Jesus Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us now join in our Lord's Prayer. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let us join together in our prayer of dedication. Let us pray. Almighty God, we have opened our hands to you, and our hands have been filled with good things. Receive the gifts we have in gratitude for your care for us and help us to bless you with the dedication of our lives through Christ by the power of your Holy Spirit. Amen.
Worthy is the Lamb who was slain Worthy is the King who conquered the grave Worthy is the Lamb who was slain Worthy is the King who conquered the grave Brothers and sisters, friends, it's been a wonderful day of worship. Happy Pentecost. May the Spirit of the Lord surround you, comfort you, strengthen you, and give you peace. We are united as one church. We are children with many unique abilities and diversity. And God is pleased. Let us be united. Let us hear one another. Let the Spirit work so we can have a better world. Maybe not in our time, but in God's time. I send you out today in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.